Hello and good afternoon CTS 265 section 840 students for the fall 2016 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the CCMP route course and this afternoon's video tutorial is going to be the solution set and tutorial on challenge activity one in our Cisco Learning Labs curriculum where we're going to be taking a step back and sort of departing from our discussion on EIGRP to now close out the challenge activity on RIP NG, in other words, uh, RIP with IPv6 or RIP Next Generation. So let's go ahead and pull the scenario up here and see what we're being tasked with. So uh, the company that we work for has added a new branch office. The senior network engineer, Bob, installed a router at the new location, made some physical connections. And so here's branch two right here. We've got loop back addresses behind both branch one and branch two. Our job in the challenge is to configure branch two with an I, or with IPv6 addresses and RIP NG. Bob has also pointed out that all currently configured routers have statically configured default routes, and he's tasked us with reconfiguring the network in which only BBR, which is this router right here, has the default route configured and then all other routers acquire the route through RIPNG. So we should immediately be thinking that that's going to call in the default information originate command. Uh, but first, let's go ahead on the job aids in order for us to get the addressing that we're going to need. We can take a look at the IP addresses here for branch two. So there's the loopback address. Uh, 2001 db8 ac10 1400 colon colon 2 is our ethernet 00 so let's jump on to branch 2 we're going to go from user exec to privilege exec in a global config do show ipv6 interface brief and yeah as you can see we've got nothing configured right now so let's jump into we'll do our loopback interface first so interface loopback 0 ipv6 address uh, and it was 2001 DB8 AC, or no, not AC, it was C0. This is always one of those things that drives me crazy. Uh, the addressing C0A8. All right, so C0A8 colon 1400 colon colon 1. Whoops. I get type in there. C0A8. C0A8. We've got colon 1400 colon colon 1 slash 64. And we'll go ahead and set our IPv6 address to FE80 colon colon 2 for branch 2 for our link local. Uh, again, not required, but no harm in doing that. And we're up already. I always like to say no shut. So interface Ethernet 00. And we're going to say no shut here. IPv6 address. And this was our 2001 DB8 AC10 colon 1400 colon colon 2 slash 64 and then let's also say IPv6 address FE80 colon colon 2 for our link local because we are branch 2 and I think we said no shut throw it in there to make sure so now when we say do show IPv6 interface brief we can see our loopback address here at the bottom and we also see our Ethernet 00 interface up here at the top so let's do a quick connectivity check. My guess is if I were to say do ping 2001 db8 uh, ac10 colon 1400 colon colon 1 and I'm again guessing that that was going to be the address of the HQ router uh, specifically the Ethernet 01 interface here uh, was going to be dot 1. Let's take a look at our job aids and let's see the HQ Ethernet 01. It is colon colon one. It's not responding. So if we jump on the HQ router and go from user exec to privilege exec into global config, do show IPv6 interface brief. And you can see the Ethernet 00 is configured, but Ethernet 01 is not. So let's go ahead and knock that out right now. Interface Ethernet 01. We'll say no shut IPv6 address. Uh, FE80 colon colon, we'll say three there, we should be okay. Uh, and then IPv6 address 2001 DB8, uh, what were we? AC10 colon 1400, look it up there at the top, 6400 colon colon one slash 64. And we did issue the no shut. So at this point, 
uh, we should be able to check connectivity. 2001 DB8 AC10 colon 1400 colon colon 2. All right, so we've got connectivity over to the branch, uh, excuse me, over to the, the branch 2 router. So if we take a look here, do show run section, not EIGRP, section RIP. All right, so we've got the RIP NG process enabled on a number of interfaces here, but not, do show run interface Ethernet 01, not, excuse me, not on interface Ethernet 01. So let's take care of that right now, and let's just go ahead and say IPv6 RIP CCMP underscore RIP enable. And so we're just basically enabling the RIP-NG process on the HQ router's interface toward branch 2. So now when we come over here to branch 2, let's go ahead and say IPv6. Now remember, uh, I don't need to go into IPv6 RIP. I can call it whatever I want. So I'm going to say CCIE underscore RIP enable. And we don't have IPv6 routing. So what do we need to do? Come on out here to global config, IPv6, unicast routing. And then let's get back into inter interface Ethernet 01, which would have been easier to type at this point. Or I'm sorry, Ethernet 00. Let me double check that. 01 on HQ. Yeah, so 00 here on branch 2. So interface Ethernet 00, where I'm just going to recall the IPv6 RIP, name of the process, and enable. Now, what did that do? There was no RIP-NG configuration on here prior to that. So if I were to say do show run section RIP, you can see that by enabling it under the interface, we automatically get the global RIP-NG section configured for us. So I could say IPv6 router RIP CCIE underscore RIP. And then I have access to... Uh, the commands that are here underneath the RIP configuration section. All right, so we've got it enabled. So what can we do to take a look at this? Well, I could say do show IPv6 RIP, uh, and then uh, I think the name here, CCIE, may have to go back to the context-sensitive help, CCI RIP database, right? And so there's the database. And those are the routes that we are receiving right now. If I say do show IP v6 route rip so again those are the routes that we're receiving and you can see that everything's coming in the ethernet 00 interface from and we see it with that link local address fe80 colon colon 3 we know that's the hq router so here's all the routing information we, re we are receiving uh, from the hq router all right um Let's see, so we've got that taken care of. Let me do a quick look here at the scenario one more time. Okay, Bob also pointed out that the currently configured routers have statically configured default routes. All right, so let's walk around and take a look here. So we'll look at branch one first. We'll go to uh, privilege exec from user exec and say show IPv6 route rip, and then just simply show IPv6 route. And we do. We have a default route right here, statically defined default route. So if I were to say show run, include route, we would expect to see, and there it is, the IPv6 route command. So we're simply going to say no IPv6 route, colon, colon, slash, zero. And it's the 2001 colon DB8 colon AC10 colon A00 colon, colon, one. So now if I say do show run section route, that default static route is now gone. We don't have one on branch two either. Let's check the HQ router. Do show run section route. And the HQ router also has a route, but let me confirm it's only supposed to be, uh, after reconfiguring that, which the BBR has the default route configured and all other routers acquire uh, that route through RIPNG. So we're going to pull that static default route off of the HQ router here as well. And let me make sure, whoops, let me make sure that we're in the window here. And we're simply going to say no IPv6 route, colon, colon, slash, zero. It's the equivalent of the quad zeros. 2001, colon, DB8, colon, AC10, colon, 6400, colon, colon, two. So do show 
run section route, and that's it. So that static default route is now gone as well. And so what do we need to do? Well, we need to go to BBR, right, in our diagram here, uh, and we're going to check to make sure we've got uh, an adjacency here with uh, RIP NG, or I should say that uh, information is being exchanged. And we'll go to the BBR router. We'll go from user exec to privilege exec into global config, do show IP route, and actually one IPv6. And here we have the static configured, and that's just fine. Uh, and so are we running RIP NG on the Ethernet 01 interface here? And let's say do show run uh, interface Ethernet 01. And we are. So given that we're running RIP NG on this interface, what should we be able to do? Well, we should be able to go into the interface, interface Ethernet 01, and say IPv6 RIP. The name of our process is ccmp underscore rip, default information. Now, do we want only the default information or do we want the default information and our uh, more specific prefixes? Well, let's take a look here. Um, there's only one path out for HQ. It can only come through BBR to get to the internet. So does giving the HQ router a bunch of uh, more specific longer match prefix information, is that going to help HQ? No, it's not. And when we look at branch one and branch two, it's the same thing. They have to come to HQ to get out to go to the internet. So uh, we could do two things here. We could say default information only or default information originate. And the scenario uh, did it not dictate? I don't believe it says anything about making sure that the branches or that everybody's receiving reconfiguring the network in which only BBR has a default route configured. We've taken care of that. And all other routers acquire the route oh, through RIPNG with all other routes. All right, so that answers our question. It's going to be default information. Whoops, default information originate. All right, now let's step down to branch one and branch two, and let's see. Do show IPv6 route rip. So I haven't picked it up yet. That's okay. We'll give it a second there. What about here? Do show IPv6 route rip. No, nothing there. What about on HQ? Have we picked it up there? Do show IPv6 route rip. I'm sort of working my way back. All right, so we have it here. Right, it looks good here, so let's go back and it just probably taking a little longer than we thought. Yeah, because RIP, again, every 30 seconds is when those updates are being sent out. So you can see here that we do have not only the default route that we're learning through RIP in G, but we also have the more specific routes as well. And that should do it for this activity. Again, uh, the first challenge activity is a nice uh, way to ease into the other challenge activities and to give you a sort of a flavor of what the activities will look like. I highly recommend trying to complete everything in the scenario uh, before you come over and take a look at the answer key. All right, well, this is going to wrap up challenge activity number one on RIPNG. I will see you all tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Have a great weekend.